Higgins. In the case filed, Florida Carry Incorporated versus the City of Miami Beach et al. This is the videotape deposition of Officer Kenneth Polka. This deposition is taking place at 1700 Convention Center Drive, fourth floor in Miami Beach, Florida. Today's date is November the 20th, 2020. Time on the video monitor is 1.57 p.m. Would counsel please state their appearances for the record. Eric Friday on behalf of plaintiffs. Bob Swickus on behalf of the officers. And Robert Rosenwald on behalf of the city of Miami Beach. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. All right, Officer Baldock, uh, you're employed by the City of Miami Beach. Sergeant. Correct. Sergeant Baldock, excuse me. How long have you been employed by the City of Miami Beach Police Department? Uh, 11 years this coming February. You worked any, uh, as a police officer in any other area or jurisdiction? No. Where did you go to the police academy? Miami Dade Police Academy, North Campus. And were you hired by Miami <coughs> Beach Police Department right out of the academy? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, how long did it take from your graduation to being hired here? From graduation to hire, it took about a year and a half. October 2008 to February 2010, it took. And do you know why it took that gap between? There was a hiring freeze during that time, I guess because of the economy, so that, that took a little bit. Have you ever been disciplined in your role as a employee of the Miami Beach Police Department? Yes. What was that for? Uh, I received a letter of reprimand, I believe it was my second year, uh, failure to follow orders correctly. And what, do you remember the circumstances of that failure to follow orders Basically, correctly? Basically, I was uh, ordered to keep a, a prisoner I had in my custody. Uh, at the county jail where I was at, where I was processing prisoners. Uh, she claimed she was raped, and uh, the correctional supervisor there advised that she had to be uh, taken to the rape treatment center. So I ordered another officer, a junior officer, to me to take her there um, before detectives could respond and, I guess, take over. Uh, any other discipline? Um, maybe, I want to say maybe three minor uh, written uh, reprimand, not a written reprimand, I'm sorry, uh, verbal warnings, reference off duty, just working too many hours, uh, but nothing, nothing else. Is that generally because they wanted to make sure you were fresh and rested and everything? You're only allowed to work uh, 32 hours of off-duty a week, so I may have worked more hours than that. And also, or Sergeant Baldock, what is your badge number? 991. If I refer to the day of the incident or the day we're here about, you understand that, that are the, those are the events of June 24, 2018 at the South Point Pier uh, involving individuals who were openly carrying while fishing, right? Yes. Okay. <coughs> you were wearing a body cam that day? Correct. Do you know what your body cam number was that day? My number? I mean, it has my ID number, 991 on it, so. Okay. Um, it's got a serial number, but I don't know it off memory. Well, they are not, the videos are not produced to us in discovery with anything that indicates 991 or your name on it. Correct. But I'm going to show you a screen capture. <laughs> you want the record, right? Yes. You want to hop it? 
2.01 p.m. We're back on the video record at 2.03 p.m. Did you review the body cam footage from your body cam from that day prior to today's deposition? Yes. Okay. Do you recognize this screenshot as being from your body cam as opposed to some other officers? Yes. Okay. The best I've been able to come up with is this X number up here. Um, that it appears that the last four of your body cam that day was 5094. Do you have any reason to question that? Nope. Okay. Um, it indicates a time here of T140715Z. This incident was not at 207 in the yeah. afternoon, was it? No. Okay. Do you know why that time is written that way as opposed to the time that y'all were actually doing this? I could not answer that. Okay. Are you familiar with the concept of Zulu time? I believe it's the world time or something like that. Greenwich Mean Time? I mean, I'm not familiar with it, no. Okay. So you don't know if that's how your body cams work? No. Okay. You don't know, for example, that your body cams are, you don't know whether or not your body cams are running a time based on Zulu time as opposed to local time? No, I'm not aware of those specifics. Okay. Who would know that information? That would be uh, Sergeant Bellow at the police department who runs the, the BWC, the Body Worn Camera Program. Is that spelled B-E-L-L-O-W? B-E-L-L-O, Bellow. So he could answer those questions. Bob, that is a deposition I'd be happy to do quickly by soon. God bless. <laughs> okay. Um, Sergeant Baldock, you were one of the, what I'm describing as the four initial responding officers, correct? Correct. It was you, Officer Villamil, Officer Rivera, and Officer Garcia, right? Correct. And of those four officers that were the initial responding officers, you were the senior officer in charge at that time? The supervisor of, uh, of those officers, yes. Are they normally your subordinates? During that period in time, so we do bids, yes. yes. Okay. Bids to be what shift you want to be on? Correct, day shift, afternoon, things like that. And other than being a sergeant, do you have, at that time, did you have a, an official position such as a day shift sergeant or day shift commander or anything like that? So my position during that bid and that day, I was the day shift patrol sergeant of area one, which is basically everything uh, in, the, in this general area with the exception of the entertainment district, Washington, Collins, and, and uh, Ocean Drive. So the south end of the island with the exception of the entertainment district. Correct. Now I'm assuming you were not working seven days a week as a Miami Beach police officer, right? Some weeks. Some weeks. <laughs> All right. When you were not on duty, was there somebody else who was a day shift sergeant? Or yes. A, okay. And just so the court reporter can take you both down, let him get it out as gotcha. simple as they are. Just hesitate a second. Understood. So how many day shift patrol sergeants are there for Area 1? Two. Who's the other one? The other one, I... At that time, I'm sorry. I'm trying to think. Well, I can tell you they weren't working that day. <laughs> I, I can't remember off memory. Sure. Later that day, Lieutenant Garcia showed up, right? Yes. All right, and he is your superior? Yes. And so was he in charge of the scene once he showed up? Once, uh, once I requested him and he showed up, basically, he took command of the scene. Okay. All right. You, when I was, received the discovery, I received 17 different video files with the last four digits of 5094 as that identifier. Uh, and it appears that's where you kept turning your camera on and off during the course of the events. Do you remember turning your camera on and off? Yes. 
sometimes I would get video but no audio. Do you have the ability to turn your audio off while leaving your video running? So the reason you don't get audio, and most likely it's at the beginning of the video, is um, while the BW, while the, the camera is buffering, mm -hmm. it's constantly recording. Um, so when it's constantly recording and I activate it, it records 30 seconds prior to the activation with no sound. Okay. So that's why you see a, a video with no sound for the first 30 seconds. So when you turned off but when you would turn it off to talk to another officer or to talk to Lieutenant Garcia, was it recording but just not capturing or how does that work, do you know? So when I stepped away to, to talk about the investigation with, with the Lieutenant or other officers, I would turn it off and at that point it's buffering. Okay. To your knowledge, is there any way to retrieve that video or that audio from when you turned it off? To my knowledge, no. And I've been led to understand that it is Miami Beach Police Department policy that you're allowed to turn it off at certain times to have conversations with other officers. Correct. Okay. Does it appear from your review of your video yesterday that each of the times where it was turned off and then back on was because you were engaging with another officer to discuss the investigation? Correct. Yes, it was? Yes. Okay. Do you remember how you initially learned that you needed to come to the South Point Park or South Point Pier? Yes, yeah, so we got a call through dispatch uh, from the park ranger advising that uh, we had multiple people there on the pier with uh, firearms. Um, the park ranger, I guess, approached him. Um, he advised dispatch of what he had, basically saying, I got some guys here um, with guns. And we decided to respond thinking, what, what is this? This isn't, this isn't a normal call we okay. usually get. So you didn't, did you actually speak to the park ranger before you got to the park and saw him physically? So on the BWC, it does show me, it just shows us talking to him. Mm -hmm. um, it is those 30 seconds prior, so there's no audio. So um, I can only speculate what he's saying and basically saying, I got guys here with guns. Um, I told them they had to leave. They wouldn't leave. So we're thinking, okay, why, why are these guys here? Um, do we have an active shooter situation here? I, I don't know what I got. Right. So we have to treat it as a, as a possible threat at the moment. Madam Court Reporter, can you read back my last question, please? Sure. A question, did you actually speak to the park ranger before you got to the park and saw him physically? Yes. You talked to him by phone? I believe he was, uh, he was there on scene. Right. The question was, did you speak with the park ranger before you arrived at the park and were physically present with him? No. Okay. So when he called dispatch, dispatch notified you, but they didn't patch his phone call through to you or anything like that? No. Okay. So when you're driving to the scene and before you actually get there and meet up with the park ranger, you knew what dispatch was telling you the park ranger said, not what necessarily what the park ranger actually said, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, once you got to the park, do you know who got to the park ranger first, whether it was you, Rivera, Villamil, or Garcia? We all, we all together. We were all together, so we all got there at the same time. And y'all had a short conversation with the park ranger? Correct. And he told you there were people on the pier with guns, right? Yes. Did he tell you anything else other than there are men on the pier and they have guns? It may have been brought up that these are possible sovereign citizens in that conversation. All right. Is that something the park ranger said? I don't remember the exact conversation, so... 
but I remember sovereign citizens being mentioned, which is why my alert level went up. Okay. Because sovereign citizens have a higher danger level in terms of officer interaction, right? Correct. You've had training on sovereign citizens? Yes. And that's your training is once you're dealing with those people, you got a whole other level of concern that you need to have about your interaction. Correct. Okay. But you don't remember whether it was the park ranger or one of your fellow officers that brought up these might be sovereign citizens? I do not remember. As you sit here today, do you have any reason to believe that they were sovereign citizens in any way? Today's date? Yes, sir. No. Okay. Once you concluded your investigation that day, did you have any reason to still believe they were sovereign citizens? My suspicion was lowered, but it's, it, I still don't know to this day if, they're, if they truly are or not. I mean, I don't believe they are. But at that moment, going into the pier, that was my uh, uh, suspicion that these guys were, were sovereign citizens. What information did you have before you walked onto that pier? What information did you have that led you to believe they were sovereign citizens? Uh, that it was mentioned that they were possible sovereign citizens, that I had multiple armed men on the pier. And at that point, it's a Sunday morning. I have multiple people on the pier, people on the beach. I have cruise ships going by. I have the Coast Guard, multiple private uh, vessels, jet skis. So at that moment, uh, I'm treating this as a possible uh, threat. Okay. Does something about having multiple private vessels link to the idea of sovereign citizens? Objection to form. Could you read that question back again? A uh, question. Does something about having multiple vessels link to the idea of sovereign citizens? I guess no. Okay. But you, I asked you what information you had that led you to believe they were sovereign citizens. First thing you said is it was mentioned that they might be sovereign citizens. Yes, right? correct. But you don't remember who mentioned it. Correct. Okay, the next thing you said was there were multiple armed men. Correct. Does the fact that there are multiple armed men together, is that an indicator of sovereign citizen behavior to you? It's possible. Okay. Have you had training that indicates that is a defining or identifying characteristic of sovereign citizens? Uh, my training advise, uh teaches me that uh, sovereign citizens are usually armed. Okay. The fact that it's a Sunday morning, does that in some way indicate to you that the people there are sovereign citizens? The day of the week is irrelevant. Okay. Well, you listed it. That's why I'm asking. Correct. Does the fact that cruise ships are nearby somehow indicate to you that a armed person is probably a sovereign citizen? No. Do you know if there were any cruise ships scheduled to come in or out that day during that time period? Usually Sundays is the days most of the ships depart. However, uh, since there's so many cruise ships, it's, sometimes it's normal for all, every day of the week. Okay. But Sunday is usually the bulk day. You believe that Sunday is usually the bulk day that most cruise ships come in or out of Miami Beach? Usually come out. Usually come out, okay. And you are stating that as based on what was going on in 2018, in June Based on my observation of working in the area. In June of 2018? Correct. If I've told you I did a check and that there was not a single cruise scheduled to come in or leave Miami Beach that day, would that make you rethink that testimony? Objection to form. You can answer the question. I can answer it? No, that doesn't change my mind. Okay. Did you actually see any cruise ships physically present at the pier that particular day, to your recollection? I don't recall. What time do cruise ships usually leave when they leave? All throughout the day. I don't have specific times. When do they usually return, to your knowledge? Same thing. Speci uh, all, throughout all throughout the day? The day? Yes. You ever taken a cruise, sir? Yes, I have. You remember what time your cruise left? Mm, multiple cruises, multiple different times. You're telling me you've had been on a cruise that left in the morning? I don't recall. 
do you recall ever specifically going on a cruise that left the port before noon? Not to the best of my memory. Do you ever remember going on a cruise that the ship came back after noon? Not to the best of my memory. How many cruises do you think you've been on, officer or sergeant? Uh, six, maybe. Of those six cruises, didn't most of them come in like possibly even before daybreak? I and could they say were that. returning? Yeah. Could I answer? <laughs> and didn't most of them depart <laughs> later in the afternoon? Yes. Do you remember any specific crews that didn't depart in late afternoon or come back in early morning? Not in my experience. Okay. So I got, let me ask you again, other than the things you've already listed, was there any no. other information you had been given either by dispatch or by the ranger that led you to believe that these men were possibly so sovereign citizens? No. Do you remember if you wrote anything in your report at the conclusion that stated you believed they were sovereign citizens? It was written on the, the special incident, which when I briefed uh, Lieutenant Garcia, I believe, who wrote it. A special incident written by Lieutenant Garcia? Yes. Okay. Was that document prepared the same day as the incident? It should have been. Okay. Um, did you review any records for today? Uh, reviewed it yesterday, and I, and, I, and I saw it there. You saw a special incident yesterday? Uh, and when I reviewed the reports yesterday, I saw it there, yes. Okay. Um, did you review something that looked like this? Case, case detail reports. report? Yes. Case report detail, excuse me. Yes, I did. Okay. This was produced in Discovery. It is numbered pages 1 through, or 1 of 72, and there are 72 pages here. Okay. okay. Did you review this particular document in terms of pages 1 through 72? I reviewed the documents, uh, so most likely, yes, related to this incident. Okay. Do you know if the special incident report was in this document or something separate? The case report is a report that the officers complete, mm -hmm. and the special incident is a, is a document that uh, the lieutenant completes, basically to advise the, the higher-ups, the captains, the majors, and the chiefs. Okay. Do you know where that special incident report was routed to after it was written? Where it was routed to? No. Like who got Records copies of department, it? I'm going to guess. And so Lieutenant Garcia wrote it. Do you remember a date on it? I don't remember the exact, but it should be the same day. Okay. Who provided that document to you yesterday to review with the special incident report in it? Uh, Sawickus. Okay. Do you know if it referenced going, that it was submitted to the Florida Fusion Center? Mm, I'm not aware of that. But you do recall that it referenced that these individuals were suspected to be sovereign citizens? At that moment in time, that was my suspicion. Okay. And you said at that moment in time, are we talking about when you went out on the pier or at that moment in time when you were... Before we, before we went on the pier. At the time that this special incident report was written, though, was it still your opinion, and you reviewed it with Lieutenant Garcia, was it still your opinion that these were sovereign citizens? I'm sorry, can you repeat it? Sure. At the time you first reviewed the special incident report with Lieutenant Garcia, you said about the same time or maybe within a day or two of the incident, did you still believe they were sovereign citizens? My suspicions were not as high being that they advise they're part of a uh, Florida Carry group and their main uh, reason for being there was for the open carry with the, with the fishing ordinance or statue, I'm sorry. So they advised you that, that, that their main reason for being there was so that they could open carry while fishing? That was what the, one of the individuals kept repeating. Okay. When you got on the pier, did it appear they were in fact fishing? 
when we approached them, um, most of them, to the best of my recollection, were standing next to their fishing poles. It was very clear that they had uh, weapons, they had sidearms. So at that moment, my main concern was securing the scene as safely as possible uh, so we can safely conduct our investigation. Okay. You didn't see them casting a line out. Oh, let me rephrase. Nobody cast a line out while they were in handcuffs, right? No. But lines were in the water while they were in handcuffs, weren't they? I believe so, yes. In fact, one of your officers, or maybe it was you, even helped reel in one of the lines, didn't they? After reviewing my body-worn camera, I did reel in one of the, the rods and cleaned it up with the seaweed. Okay. So when you got on that pier, those lines were in the water from those fishing rods? Yes, but that wasn't focused on any fishing lines at that moment. I, I understand, and that's okay. Did you see fishing tackle in any of the bags that they had there? Once the scene was secured, I started noticing the fishing poles, uh, I started noticing the, the fishing equipment, yes. Okay. So I'm going to back up back to when you first got there now. Mm -hmm. Got a little ahead of myself. <clears throat> Did the park ranger tell you that there was a sign that said no carry of firearms on the pier? I don't remember if he did, but I can assume he said he did. Did he tell you that they were refusing to, that the fishermen were refusing to leave or refusing to comply? Do you remember what's, what the ranger told you? I remember something to that effect, exact verbiage, no. Okay. Did he tell you they had offered to provide him with a copy of a Florida statute regarding their right to be there? I don't remember. He may have mentioned it, but I don't remember. Did he give you any information other than this is when we're talking about the park ranger. Did mm -hmm. the park ranger give you any information other than these men are armed and they are fishing? To the best of my recollection, I was advised that I have armed men on the pier. They may be possible sovereign citizens, and that's pretty much the information I got at that moment. But I'm asking about a specific person, not what some general other person might have said. I'm asking about the park ranger park ranger only, and you said you don't remember, you've already told me you don't remember who said something about sovereign citizen first. Correct. So did the park ranger give you any information other than armed people on the pier who are fishing? That's pretty much the gist of what he told us. Okay. That's the only things you remember him specifically talking about? I remember about. that because to me that's the top priority at that moment. So What's the top priority? Uh, and, you know, possible uh, situation here with our men, um, with public and officers involved. So that, that was my main concern is what do I got here and how do I safely take control of it? Well, well when you're standing with these other three officers back talking to the ranger, mm -hmm. there aren't any officers involved in this yet, are there? No. Those men are out on the pier by themselves or with other members of the public? Correct. Did the park ranger tell you that they had threatened anybody? No. Did the park ranger tell you that they were rude to him? I don't believe so. Did the park ranger tell you that they were waving guns around out of their holsters? No. Did the park ranger tell you the guns were pistols in holsters? I believe he may have mentioned they were, uh, they were handguns. Okay. I don't remember anything about rifles being mentioned. Well, you were carrying a holstered pistol, weren't you? Yes. Do you have some special right to carry a holstered pistol separate and differently from those individuals who are carrying holstered pistols on the pier? Objection to form and argumentative. You can answer. I can answer? Yes, sir. Uh, you mean like on off duty or? Well, you are familiar that we have laws in Florida regarding firearms, right? Correct. And you, do you know what law gives you the right as a police officer to openly carry while you're on duty? Openly carry while on duty? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's part of my job. I'm, I'm allowed to. But what law allows you to do so? The specific law? Yes, sir. I don't, I wouldn't know the specific statute verbatim. So you believe merely by having a police badge, that is the authority and you don't need any special statutory authority to be able to openly carry while you're on duty? I'm sure you do need a statute stating that. Okay. Well, what if I told you that the statute that allows you to open carry on duty is 790.25? Okay. 
Is, you ever heard of that statute before? I'm sure I've reviewed it once or twice in my career. <laughs> uh, is that also the statute these gentlemen were quoting to you that day when you were disarming them? Um, um, I don't know. I don't know the statute verbatim. Okay. Did you look at it that day? I'm sure I eventually uh, re reviewed it. Well, do you remember stating while wearing your body-worn camera that the fishing thing, that's going to be the loophole, or words to that effect? Yes. In the form of the question. But yes, you do remember. I remember uh, when, we, when I reviewed my camera, I do uh, remember saying that, okay. yes. So the fishing thing, uh, the law that allows them to open carry while fishing is just a loophole in the law. Objection in the form of the question. You can answer. Um, I would say loophole probably wasn't the best word to use, but uh, it was basically what allowed them to open carry okay. uh, was with the fishing poles. And so the statute that allows them to do that is 790.25 sub 3 sub H. Okay? Okay. Do you know what 790.25 sub 3 sub D says? I'm going to assume something with hunting or probably talking about law enforcement. It discusses law enforcement being allowed to open carry, but you weren't familiar with that that day. Mm, that wasn't my concern at the moment. Okay. Have you had any training on that statute since that day? reference uh, open carry with fishing or with law enforcement? Either. Yes. Which? Uh, the fishing. But not as to law enforcement or that, that that's what authorizes you to open carry? It may have been mentioned, but I don't, I, I just focused on uh, the fishing portion. Okay. Now that you know that law exists, does that make you question how you handle the situation that day? Now that I'm uh, fully aware and if the, if if the call didn't go out with possible sovereign citizens, it's, it's quite possible the situation would have been dealt with very differently. <clears throat> but you now understand that a person who is openly carrying while fishing is not breaking any law? Correct. Did you find any violation of law being committed that day by any of the six individual plaintiffs in this case? No. Because if you had found such a violation, you would have either issued a citation or arrested them, right? Correct. At some point... I'll check the last three questions to the form of the question. Thank you. At some point that day, did you ask another officer to take pictures of everybody's guns? I don't believe I gave that order. Okay. Do you know for a fact do you know whether some other officer did, in fact, take pictures of everybody's guns? I am unaware if someone took pictures. I never gave an order, and I, I don't remember seeing someone taking pictures of do guns. You rem do you remember asking another officer if they had taken pictures of the guns that day? No. I don't remember. Okay. You, don't, you didn't see anything on your video about asking whether it was you or some other some other body else's voice on the on your camera. You don't remember anything on your camera that you reviewed of somebody, one of the other officers being asked if they had taken pictures of all the guns. I don't remember that. Okay. What about taking pictures of all of the concealed carry licenses? I don't remember uh, telling anybody to take pictures of anything. Do you remember hearing anything like that on the body cam footage you reviewed? On my video, no. Yes, on your video, and I'm not. I don't care whether you said it or somebody else, but anything you overheard while watching your video. After watching the videos, I don't remember any mention of that. Any mention of taking pictures of the concealed carry license. Correct. Any picture? You don't recall anything about taking pictures of the serial numbers on the guns. Correct. But you do know that the guns and the backgrounds of the individuals were run, right? Yes. Yeah, I I, I ordered that. You did order that? Yeah. What officer do you need in order to, con to detain somebody? Can you tell me the specific legal term that you need in order to conduct a detention of a citizen? Um, at that point, we are conducting an investigation, so I'm assuming, not assuming, um, I have to make sure a crime has not been committed. Okay. So at this point, as I'm approaching the pier, uh, I'm thinking I may have a possible threat. I may have a possible terrorist threat, active shooter. I, I don't know what I got. So I got to detain, secure, and investigate. I'm asking you 
again, what is the legal standard for you to detain a citizen in general? Not just that day, but what do you need in order to detain a citizen? Basically, they, if a suspicion of committing a crime, and uh, they'd have to dispel uh, my alarm before I can basically let them go. Is the proper term a reasonable, articulable suspicion that crime is or is about to be afoot? Yes. Is that a phrase you've heard before? Yes. Okay. So, on that day, when you went out on that pier, as you were approaching those men, can you identify for me all crimes that you either believed were being committed or might be about to be committed? I believed a possible active shooter situation could have possibly occurred. Anything else? Before my investigation. That was my basically my only concern. Okay. So you were not concerned about the fact that they were openly carrying firearms? No. You did not walk on the pier believing that yeah, the... Oh, on to the question. Okay. You did not detain them in the belief that the open carry of the firearms by those individuals was illegal? Repeat the question. When you detained them, did you believe that their act of openly carrying firearms was a crime? They were openly carrying uh, in the state of Florida, which is not allowed. And my main concern at that moment was obviously the, the possible threat, securing and investigating. Uh, you know, like I said, when we walked up, they were standing next to the fishing poles. Um, my main concern was just securing the scene and finding out what I have. So one of the crimes you suspected when you walked up was that they were openly carrying a firearm? Yes. Okay. And you've now learned that that was not a crime? Correct. In the form of the question. Approximately how many minutes into the situation would you say passed from the time you drew your firearm mm -hmm. until you realized that these were not people there to commit an act of shooting? Checked in the form. You can answer the question. I can answer. Um, once they were secured, and now my, well, it didn't even go down because there was more people coming. Um, but once those initial gentlemen were secured, and I heard them talking about the, the laws reference open carry and fishing, um, I started realizing, okay, this is, maybe this isn't sovereign citizens, maybe this is something else I'm dealing with here. But okay. I still wasn't sure. But you had all their guns taken away. Correct. You had checked them for knives. We searched them. At that point, why leave them in handcuffs? At that point, we were getting uh, word that more individuals with guns were walking towards the pier. So as I'm dealing with uh, the men on the pier, me and my officers, I'm advising dispatch. You know, I still at this point don't know what I have. And now I'm being told that there's more people with guns walking around this park and beach area. Okay. Who told you that? That came through dispatch. Do you know who, took, who called into dispatch with that information? I don't know the who exactly, no. Okay. How many other individuals eventually showed up to your knowledge? I believe uh, two more, but at that moment I wasn't, I'm expecting, you know, I'm thinking how many people am I dealing with? I don't know. We well, say two more. One of those actually ended up being a reporter, didn't it? I believe. Objection the form of the question. You, okay. You say you believe two more people showed up while you were dealing with the first five individuals, right? Yes. One of those individuals was that showed up was Jonah Weiss. Okay. Is that, is that correct? I'm, I don't know. Okay. Did one of those individuals that showed up after you were already on the pier mm -hmm. was armed and was brought out on the pier, right? Yes, I believe so. I'm going to uh, tell you that that individual's name was Jonah Weiss. Okay. There was a second individual brought out with him also though, right? Okay, yes. Do you know what that second individual's profession was? No. Did you never identify it that day as to what that second individual was? I didn't ask her, no. 
did you find out that that second individual was not with the group but was a reporter? Objection to the form of the question. You can answer. Uh, no, I wasn't aware he was a reporter. Okay. What, do you know that today? I know that right now. Okay. You didn't know it from watching your body cam? Uh, I remember reviewing the cameras. Uh, there were some people, um, there was media there, I remember seeing, and then there was also other people with cameras there filming the thing, filming the, the scene, and then uh, once the scene was done, asking questions of passerbys, uh, you know, are they aware of the, the open carry with the fishing and basically educating the public. Are you aware in the state of Florida it is a crime to interfere with the lawful taking of game or fish? Excuse me, will you read that question back I to me? Yeah, if you can Sorry. repeat it. Over Are you aware that in the state of Florida it is unlawful to interfere with the lawful taking of game or fish? Objection to the form of the question. I'm not too familiar with those laws. Okay. So you don't know, for example, if it's a crime to harass a fisherman? Objection harass to the form of the question. Yes. <clears throat> like as law enforcement or a just as a general proposition that it's an, a crime to harass or stop it interfere with a person's fishing I'm not aware of the question I'm not aware of the specifics uh, uh, what the statute basically states I'm not, okay. not familiar with those statutes So after you and the other three officers meet with the park ranger, somebody makes the decision that y'all are going to make an approach to the people on the pier, right? Correct. And what would you describe, is there a term you would use to describe the type of approach y'all did? Um, as tactical as possible, basically making sure, uh, you know, we approach, uh, I guess, side by side, so we're a bigger target. Not a bigger target, but more spread out in the event of someone does start shooting. Um, our main goal was just to take uh, one person into custody at a time. Uh, I can tell you as I started getting closer, I started realizing there was more people uh, there fishing with, uh, with sidearms than I realized. At first, I believe we thought there was three, and it ended up being five. So right there, I was caught a little off guard, um, but we slowly took them, you know, secured them and then begin our investigation. Okay, now, out of that initial five, only four of them were armed, correct? I don't remember if all of them or four of them. Okay. I don't remember. You don't remember, recall, for example, that Mr. Devine, Sean Devine, did not have a firearm on him? I don't remember. Okay. What, you don't remember one way or the other? I can't remember who had guns and who didn't. Unless, uh, obviously, what's on the video. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know people's names. Did you actually physically handcuff anybody? Uh, reviewing my BWC, I assisted, I believe, with a pill pot. Pill I believe pot. it was. I assisted with uh, giving one of my handcuffs so he could have uh, two handcuffs. Um, so it could be easier, I guess, to secure him. He's a big boy. Yes. <laughs> you didn't put handcuffs on anybody yourself, though. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was I just assisted with him. I don't, I don't remember if I did assist or handcuff someone else. I don't, I don't believe I did. Do you know if you pointed your handgun at any of the individuals? I had my gun at the low ready. Um, all the gentlemen on the pier complied with the orders and basically had their hands up. So at that immediate moment, I didn't feel the need to, to go ahead and aim it directly at them. Okay. But the other three officers did all point their firearms directly at the individuals, didn't they? Uh, after reviewing the cameras, yeah. Yes. So you were the only officer of the initial four responding who kept your gun at low ready? Correct. And part of that was because the other three officers were somewhat in your line of fire to the, to the citizens, right? They were more of going to be the engaging. Um, so realistically, if something was going to happen, I uh, would have been the, the cover person, 
you know, I would have been able to react best to, you know, worst case scenario. Right. So you were providing essentially cover for the other three officers. Correct. That was your role at that point. At that point, which was moving very quickly. Once I realized I had more subjects than, than I thought. Do you, or were you wearing body armor that day of any type? No. Did you have any in your vehicle? No. And it's my understanding the Miami Beach Police Department leaves that to the officer's discretion. Yes, they do. All right, do you, did you know if you had a patrol rifle in your vehicle that day? I don't carry one. In my vehicle. You just generally do not keep a patrol rifle in your vehicle? Correct. Uh, it, that was, at least that was your practice at that time in 2018, right? For me personally. That was your policy in 2018? For you personally? Me personally, I did not have a rifle. Other officers may or may not have. Do you keep one in your car today? No. I think Rob just dropped. Off the record, counsel? Yeah. Off the record at 2.44 p.m. We're back on the video record at 2.45 p.m. Sergeant Baldock, when, whose decision was it to approach these individuals in this tactical formation? Before, to the best of my recollection, recollec uh, recollection, um, we talked about how we're going to approach the, these gentlemen before we got on the pier, and we all came to the agreement, uh, you know, we're going to approach tactically uh, with our weapons drawn, safely securing each one, and then once they're secure, figuring out, started the investigation, figuring out what's going on, why are these guys here, see if everything checks out. At the time you walked onto that pier, had you been given any information by any person that these individuals had made an aggressive move towards any body? No. At the time you walked onto that pier, had you been given any information by any person that these people were in the act of committing a criminal offense? No. Other than open carry. Okay. Which you now know wasn't even a crime. Correct. Objection with, in the form of the question. With uh, the... the with the exception... Take a breath in between, so gotcha. let's object. With the exception of uh, the fishing or hunting. So it's your understanding that open carry is a crime unless you are hunting, fishing, or camping? Correct. So open carry is also a crime unless you are a law enforcement officer? Correct. Okay. So equal weight, right there in the same statute, right? Correct. So it's not really an exception as much as it is the law of the state of Florida, right? Correct. In the form of the question. The form of the question. <laughs> so the fact that you believed they were committing the crime of open carry when you walked out there was more about your lack of legal knowledge than and lack of Florida your knowledge of Florida law and not the fact that they were committing a crime, right? Objection in the form of the question, argumentative. Yeah, the form of the question. He wasn't wrong, he was right about the law. <laughs> you can answer. Okay, repeat the question. You did not have knowledge that fishing allowed them to openly carry at that time, correct? Objection in the form of the question. At that time, my top priority was officer safety and safety of the public. That's not the question I asked, sir. Madam Court Reporter, can you read the question back? Question, you did not have knowledge that fishing allowed them to openly carry at that time. I'm going to object to this entire series of questions. It, 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 simply fishing under the statute does not vitiate the crime of open carry. There are numerous other Obje elements. Mr. Rosenwald, Mr. Rosenwald, that is number one, a speaking objection, which we know how Mr. Switkus feels about that. And number two, your legal opinion is not my concern right now about what the law does or doesn't say. I'm asking the officer a question. Well, what, what my concern is is that you keep representing
representing to him what a Florida statute says and <coughs> telling him that's something that's not true. So if you want to keep misquoting the law, you go ahead, but I'm going to make an objection to it. Okay. So, officer, you now understand that it is not a crime to have an open carry firearm while fishing, right? Objection right. in the form of the question. I understand that, yes. Okay. But that was not your understanding on the day of this incident, was it? Swarm. Join. You can answer. My understanding at that moment was that they were open carrying. And that they were violating the law by doing so. Correct. Objection to form. And the fact is, or back up. <laughs> what is your understanding of Miami Beach Police Department's policy regarding when you should draw your weapon and point it at another human being? When there's a threat level there. Okay. And can you describe what that threat level looks like based on your understanding of the policy of the Miami Beach Police Department? Um, if there's a threat level where you're making an interaction with someone who's known or possibly carrying a weapon, okay. a threat to the officer or the public, okay. Anything else? If I feel uh, either myself, my officers, or the public are in danger. Do you need all three of those, or just one of them's good enough to draw and point your weapon at somebody? I feel pretty comfortable with one of them. Okay. So is it your understanding, then, the mere fact that somebody is known to be, or is possibly carrying a weapon, that that authorizes you to draw and point your firearm at that person? Objection in the form of the question. That you can answer. Uh, in my training experience, if I know there's a weapon in play in an investigation, um, I'm going to use everything to my tactical advantage to first secure that weapon before I continue my investigation. So is it your understanding that policy and your training dictate that you disarm any person with a firearm who you encounter? If Objection I, in the form of the question. If I'm conducting an investigation. So if you see an individual who is carrying a firearm, is that enough for you to conduct an investigation right then? If I see, in the form of the question. If I see an individual carrying a firearm, mm -hmm. they're already uh, violating uh, the open carry. Well, what if it's concealed and you see the bulge? Objection to the form of the question. <laughs> if it's concealed, <laughs> mm -hmm. depending on the situation, we may approach. Um, it, it would, it would, I'd have to see, you know, there have to be a situation. Okay. Obviously, if it's concealed and it just pops out, you know, that's, that's different than someone who's openly carrying. All right. So is it your understanding then that any person open carrying, you are then allowed to go up to them and detain them? We Objection to the form of the question. Counsel, you kind of danced around this for the last half hour, but go ahead. We will investigate again. it. You will investigate any person who is openly carrying a firearm? I would, yes. Okay. And does investigate mean you will detain that person? Yes, we may detain them. And if you detain them, you are absolutely positively going to disarm them, aren't you? Yes. No exceptions? No exceptions. For the time being. Okay. Once you discover that they are not committing a crime and have that firearm where they are lawfully, does the Miami Beach Police Department have a policy on how you return that firearm to that person? Objection in the form of the question. Okay. Can, can, would, would either of you like to? Would either of you like to let me know what you have, what problem you have with the form of the question, specifically? Read the question back, and I'll give you a lot of reasons. Okay. Uh, question: Once you discover that they are not committing a crime and have that firearm law, excuse me. Once you discover that they are not committing a crime and they have that firearm lawfully, does the Miami Beach Police Department? have a policy 
on how you return that firearm to that person? Okay, it, it is a compound question, and it assumes scenarios that are too numerous to indicate, and it's based upon a reasonable investigation, and no officer can be definitively positive that a crime might be or sh might happen or will happen because it dispels his initial suspicion. Okay. That's the nature of my objection. Mr. Rosenwald, you want to add anything? I do. You keep making this false uh, statement that once the officer has determined that no crime has been committed and that to me the officer is not to uh, determine whether a crime has been committed in that whether the fishing, hunting, and camping exception applies. There are also other elements to that, such as that they're not uh, convicted of a crime, they're not a drunk, they're not uh, other things that the statute lists, which the uh, carrier of the gun has the duty to establish as an affirmative defense. Those things were never considered in this case, and the officers had no way of knowing whether those things were true, and so you keep saying once it was established that they weren't breaking any law, the officers did what they could, but the, it was the duty of the guys carrying the gun to establish whether they were breaking the law, and they never did it in this case. There's not a shred of evidence that they did so. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rosewall. All right, Sergeant Balda. Yes. There came a point in your investigation on Sunday, June 24, 2018 where you decided you had to release these men, right? Correct. When th at the point you released them, was it your opinion that no crime had been committed? At that moment, under my investigation, I did not find a, a crime being committed. Okay. Is this the first ever scenario in your employment that you have encountered where you took a firearm from somebody and had to return it to them when you released them? No, this is not the first time. Okay. To your knowledge, is there a standard operating procedure regarding how to return firearms in the Miami Beach Police Department's policies? Uh, the specifics, no. no. Not to the best of my knowledge at the moment. I'm going to have to review the, the policy. Do you have a standard procedure in how you return firearms after you determine that the person should get it back. Common practice with all of uh, Miami Beach police officers, once it's deemed that uh, you know no crime has been committed and uh, the person being investigated is uh, has done nothing wrong, usually will safely uh, return the weapon in a safe manner. For example, the trunk of a vehicle or a glove compartment, um, and then we explain to them once we uh, walk away, you're free to go ahead, uh, you know, put the weapon back together and. Uh, and holster it uh, concealed or, or whatever it is, you know, however you had it uh, stored. Okay. And it's your under so you stated, though, that this was the standard procedure of all officers in the Miami Beach Police Department. Yes. Where did that procedure come from? Did you create it? I did not create it. Okay. Is it written down in some manual somewhere? I would have to review the manuals. Okay. Have you reviewed the manuals before or after this incident to see if there's any standard procedure in there? No. Is that how you were trained to do it? Yes. Where did you receive the training to do it in that manner? Field training officer uh, when I was on FTO, you know, right. being trained uh, by, a, by a training officer. Training officer of the Miami Beach Police Department. Correct. Approximately what year would that have been? Uh, 2010. And you've never been told that that procedure is improper or shouldn't be used? Objection in the form of the question. You can answer. I've never. I just asked, I just asked if he's ever been told that it's improper shouldn't be used. I'm not sure. that it is. Have you ever been told that, is it, that that is an improper procedure or that such a procedure should not be used? Objection, no. form of the question. No. Okay. <clears throat> so it's your standard policy and procedure to leave that person unarmed and defenseless while you depart the scene. Objection of form of the question argumentative. I said, is your policy or procedure of how you do it to leave people unable to utilize their firearm until you have left the scene? They are unable to utilize their firearm until we leave, correct? Okay. For our safety. Okay. For your safety? Yes. What about for their safety? 
once we leave, they can they can get their gun. Well, what about their safety between you leaving and them getting it back loaded? Does that not matter? Objection to form of the question argumentative. You can answer. Yes, it does matter. It does. Yeah, that's a yes, it does. I would that would say yeah. Okay. Safety always matters. Right. Is your safety more important than a citizen's safety? My safety? Mm -hmm. uh, I view the public more important than, than me. Okay. But so do you view a lawfully armed citizen as having an equal or greater safety right than yourself? Objection to the form of the question. A lawful? A lawfully armed citizen, do you view them as having an equal or greater right to safety than yourself? They have every... Objection. Objection to the form. Go ahead. Every right is uh, any other person in public. And that includes the right to keep and bear arms, doesn't it? Correct. Includes the right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures, doesn't it? Correct. Okay. Once y'all had concluded that these individuals were not committing a crime by lawfully, or excuse me, once the decision had been made by officers on the scene, whether yourself or Lieutenant Garcia, mm -hmm. not to arrest these individuals for open carry, did you, did they then search other items that the individuals had on the pier? I don't remember uh, searching. I mean, all they had was the coolers. Okay. Do you remember yourself or other officers searching the coolers? We may have opened them. I could assume that. I don't remember. What grounds would you have had to open those coolers? To verify uh, if they had fishing equipment, I guess, fishing bait, things like that. Did anybody, do you remember any officers suggesting that the cooler should be searched for alcohol to see if they were violating the no alcohol on the pier rule? Uh, I don't remember if that was mentioned, but it may have. Okay. Did you have probable cause to believe that there was illegal alcohol on the pier? Objection to the form of the question. Mm, no, we didn't, I didn't, I, overall I didn't have any suspicion of uh, an alcohol issue. At any point were you given any information that these men had taken any affirmative action or demonstrated any behavior indicating they were a threat other than the fact that they possessed firearms? Objection to form of the question. Uh, just the information of our men through dispatch of the, on the pier and of the interactions with the park ranger okay. and the possible fact that they, they may be uh, sovereign citizens. Would you agree that none of the two things you just, two or three things you just described are acts or demonstrations or actions of the individuals, but rather information you were given? Objection of form of the question. I'm, I'm going off based on information I was given. Okay. Were you given any information that any of them had been aggressive to anybody? I don't remember getting that information. Were you given any information that any of them had pointed a gun at anybody? No. Were you given any information that any of them had threatened anybody? No. Did you get any information that any of them had displayed their firearms in a rude, careless, angry, or threatening manner? No. So at the time you approached them, <coughs> you had no information of that of those types? Of Objection those things, the no. form of the question. And just throughout your entire investigation, you never obtained any information, intelligence, or report that these men had engaged in any rude, threatening, or aggressive manner towards any person, did you? At the conclusion of the investigation, no, we didn't find any of that. Okay. Who made the decision to close the pier down at the end of the event? Who, who made the decision to close the pier down at the end of the incident? Lieutenant Garcia did. And was that to make sure that those men had to leave? Objection to the form of the question. I can't answer for Lieutenant Garcia. If the pier had remained open, did you have, if the pier had remained open that day, did you have any grounds to make the men leave once y'all's investigation was concluded? No. And actually, we even advised them that if they wish to continue fishing uh, on the rocks there, um, they were allowed to. Okay, but you weren't going to let them continue fishing on the pier? 
Lieutenant Garcia made that decision. Do you know why? I can assume because we would be getting... Uh, I want you to guess, but if you know, you can answer. But don't, I don't want you guessing. Okay, um, I'll let him answer that then. So did Lieutenant Garcia ever advise you or tell you why he was closing the pier down? I don't remember uh, having that conversation, or I can't remember if we did the exacts on that conversation. Is that possibly one of the conversations you had when you turned your body cam off to talk to him? It's Objection possible. in the form of the question. It's possible. Okay. Do you remember any specifics about any conversations you had that day with other officers when you were turning your body cam on and off? To the best of my knowledge, uh, we were just... Okay, you can answer that question yes or no, but there's a specific provision of testifying about police tactics that we're not going to go into today. Okay. So if you remember a specific that is not divulging police tactics, you can answer the question. This answer can be yes or no. Yes. You do remember that you had those discussions? I remember turning off the camera and having discussions about the investigation. Okay. Were some of those discussions about tactics, police tactics? No. Okay, so none of the discussions you had when you turned off the cameras were about police tactics? I, don't, I believe not. Okay. Do you, have, do you remember what the conversations were about in any of the 17 different times you turned off the camera? Uh, most likely updating the lieutenant on the records checks of the individuals, um, just getting updated on what uh, they came back. Uh, most likely uh, making sure the, when the records checks on the guns came back they were clear, which I think they were. Um, and then I remember him having on the phone with his higher ups on how to basically uh, handle the situation. Did he ever tell you who he was talking to on the phone in terms of higher ups? I don't remember. That was You his. don't remember who he told you or you don't remember if he told you? I don't. Rem I knew he was talking to higher ups. I don't remember who. So his his job at that moment was talking to them, and my job at that moment was just, you know, supervising the investigation. Okay. Once you had determined that everybody had fishing licenses, mm -hmm. and that everybody was fishing, mm -hmm. and once you had back records checks on each individual. Mm -hmm interrupt him let him ask the whole no. question because i'm going to interpose an objection and if you keep saying oh we don't know if it's the gotcha, next question gotcha. i will start all over bob just to make it easy for you god bless you i'm going to list a list of things that you, that i saw performed on the video on the radio <clears throat> traffic, okay okay i saw you or some officer i saw some officer Check the backgrounds of each individual. Yes? Go ahead, Bob. Yes. I heard radio traffic where they checked out each gun. Yes. I saw y'all investigate whether they had fishing licenses. Yes. You had already observed that they were fishing, right? Objection form with a question. I observed the fishing poles with the lines in the water, yes. Okay. Is there some other definition of fishing you know of? Objection in the form with a question. Argumentative. I never witnessed anybody holding okay. a rod when we approached. Do you have to be holding a rod to be engaged in the act of fishing? Objection in the form of the question. I would have to review the statue. Okay. Do you fish, Officer Baldock? No. You ever been fishing? Yes. Have you held your fishing rod the entire time you were out fishing? No. So can we agree that merely having that, excuse me, can we agree that you do not have to hold a fishing rod the entire time in order to still be engaged in the act of fishing? Objection the form of the question. Yes. Are you aware of any specific Florida law that says you're only fishing if you're actually holding the pole? I am unaware of no specific law. 
Did you do any research that day to see if you had to be holding a fishing pole to actually be counted as engaged in the act of fishing? Tim, objection in the form of the question. Uh, I remember probably after the incident reviewing the statue. Okay. Did you find any such requirement in the holding? statute? That you had to be holding the rod at all times in order to be fishing? I don't recall that you had to be holding it the whole time. You don't recall whether you found that information or you didn't find anything? In the act of fishing and hunting or going to and from your vehicle. I remember those, those verbiages. <clears throat> So once you had, we discussed checking the person, checking the gun, checking the fishing license. Mm -hmm. Once you had all three pieces of that information back, why did you still need to detain them at that point? Objection, form of the question. Checking uh, the backgrounds check on uh, the six uh, men or seven, I don't remember the exact number, and the firearms took a little bit of time with the, with the records channel. Okay. Um, while that was going on, Lieutenant Garcia was talking with higher ups. Um, I can't say what they were talking about, but I also had to wait on his orders on what to do with, with these men. Uh, but once it was discovered that, uh, if I remember correctly, once it was discovered that uh, everything checked out, uh, that's at that point, that's when we went ahead and started un unhandcuffing uh, the individuals. So you're saying you believe that y'all started unhandcuffing them as soon as you knew that all the guns were clear and all the backgrounds were once uh once our alarm you know that these guys aren't criminals they don't have criminal uh, backgrounds that they're allowed to have these guns they don't have any they're not any alerts on any terrorist group or convicted felons or mental mental uh, health uh, personnel you know that they're just they're normal people um and the guns cleared no stolen firearms you know our, our alarm was uh it's dispelled our alarm so we went ahead and unhandcuffed them, yes. That wasn't the exact question I asked. The question I asked was, is it your contention that they were an unhandcuffed as soon as all people and all guns had been cleared by the background checks? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Okay. All right, and do you have any idea at what time point, how many minutes into the incident it was before each of the individual's backgrounds had come back clear? Uh, I'm gonna assume it was right before the, we unhandcuffed them. Um, and then after reviewing the, the camera yesterday, uh, between the time we approached them on the pier to the time we started unhandcuffing them was roughly about an hour and a half, I would say. I said an hour and 18 minutes. I think that might even be closer for What's you. What's that? An hour and 18 minutes. Possibly. So we'll say an hour and 18 to an hour and a half. We could say that. Okay. So does it take an hour and a quarter to get background checks run on six people? I'm not uh, a records uh, the dispatcher, so Sometimes it's quicker, sometimes it's longer. But are you saying that you think that morning it took all of that time just to get back a, hey, this person's not a felon, this person's not prohibited from owning firearms? We would have to with the question. We would have to review uh, the records uh, channel transmissions, but uh, to the best of my knowledge, that's how long it took. Have you ever encountered an individual before with a concealed carry license issued by the state of Florida? Yes. Have you ever found a stolen firearm in the possession of a person with a concealed carry license? I'm sorry, can you repeat? Have you ever found a person in possession of a stolen firearm who also had a Florida concealed carry license? I don't believe I have, but I can't say for certain. Okay. Did you also run all their concealed carry licenses for those that had them? I believe we did. Okay. I would assume we did, and so I'm, I'm pretty sure we did. Officer, do you have a concealed carry license? I do. When did you get it? Uh, maybe eight years ago, I'm guessing. Before this incident? Yes. Okay. And if you've had it eight years, you may have even had to renew it at least once, right? I believe I just did last year or this year. 
Do you remember get when you got that license, filling out an application for that license with the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services? I remember uh, filling out a form. Okay. Do you remember having to sign that form? I'm sure I did. Okay. Do you remember that form stating that you were signing it under penalty of perjury? Or under oath or anything like that? Mm, I'm sure I did. Okay. Do you remember that form stating that by signing it you were stating you had read and understood all the provisions of Florida Statute Chapter 790? I don't remember that. Okay. If I told you it's absolutely on that form, would you have any reason to dispute that? Objection no. the form of the question. No, I, I don't believe. I'm sure it's on there. So did you actually read Chapter 790 before you filed that? I probably didn't. Was there any reason to close the pier that day other than to make sure those people were not allowed to stay on that pier? Objection the form of the question. I didn't make that decision, so I can't. Didn't ask whether you made the decision. I understand you didn't, Officer mm -hmm. Sergeant Baldock. Yep. I'm asking to your knowledge, was there any reason that pier needed to be closed other than to make sure those individuals did not stay on that pier with those firearms? Objection to form of the question. I could assume we closed it uh, to avoid future calls of people okay. calling. But you don't know of any specific reason it needed to be closed other than to get those people uh, let me rephrase. I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase it. Do you have no idea why the pier was closed other than the orders of Sergeant of Lieutenant Garcia? I have. I can have. A, I can speculate. Let's say. I'm not going to ask you to speculate because Mr. Switkus would want to jump across the table at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have uh, the reasoning. Okay. As you sit here today, thinking back, was it necessary to close the pier at that point for public safety? Objection in the form of the question. It wasn't my decision. You know, I don't know if I would have made that same decision or not. I, well, tell me this. Looking back on it, do you think it was the right decision? Objection in the form of the question. Uh, I don't know. You don't have an opinion or anything regarding Lieutenant Garcia's decision to close the he, Lieutenant Garcia gave an order and you know, I follow it. Is that... Do you believe you're under some obligation to follow every order you're given, sir? No. Okay. Just want to make see we were clear on that. Do you, based on your experience, knowledge, work as a law enforcement officer, can you identify for us today any reason the pier needed to be closed on June 24, 2018? To avoid future calls. To avoid future calls for what? Objection of four. Go ahead. It's uh, very likely, um, as the day progressed, and since this was still early in the morning, um, people would have called saying, hey, there's people in the park with guns, okay. which we, you know, a lot of people in this city, when they see something suspicious, they call mm -hmm. and we investigate. All right. You investigate all calls? All types of calls, yes. You investigate any call that comes in? If it's, uh, for the most part, yes. Okay. Is the fact that somebody might be uncomfortable or call you later about the same event a reason to close a public park? If a call of a gun or a weapon comes through? Not my question. My question was, is the mere fact that somebody might call because they dislike somebody's behavior a reason to close down a public park? Objection in the form of the question. Um, I'm not sure. I'm probably not. So you think you might have, you might have had the decision been yours, close the park in order to prevent having to come back out on another call for these men with guns. Is that what Objection you're telling me? Trying to understand. That would probably be one of the factors. Okay. Any other factors you'd think? Um, at the end of the day, we have people with guns. We Anything can happen. Okay. And you didn't think it's okay to, you did not, you didn't think it was a good idea for them to have guns out on that pier, did you? 
checks in the form of the question. Um, if they're law-abiding citizens doing nothing illegal, there's, it's, you know, there's nothing, my opinion doesn't matter. Okay. Which, even though we closed the pier, we still uh, afforded them the opportunity to continue fishing. As long as they weren't going to fish on the pier. Objection in the form of the question. Uh, the lieutenant made the decision to close the pier, so the pier was off limits. Okay. Was there anything wrong with the pier? No. No structural defects? No. No dangerous thing going on on the pier? Objection in the form of the question. No. There was no reason for the pier to be closed other than to make sure that those six individuals were not on the pier with guns, was there? Objection in the form of the question, argumentative. Was there any reason other than making sure those six individuals were not on that pier with guns to close the pier down? Objection in the form of the question. I said, uh, I could assume. I didn't ask you to assume. I asked you if you knew of any reason to close that pier down other than to get those six people off that pier. Objection in the form of the question. No, I guess. Okay. To your knowledge, has there been any change in policy that you have been instructed to adhere to regarding how to deal with lawfully armed citizens since June 24, 2018? Since, uh, since the incident, yes. uh, uh, we did have uh, our quarterly training, which did uh, focus on the incident. Okay. And what were you told in that quarterly training? Uh, basically, the laws on the on that statue reference hunting, fishing. Uh, you are allowed to openly carry. Okay, it is allowed. Were you told that you should continue to investigate every case where you see somebody open carrying? Objection. Form of the question. Um, you were either told to keep to continue investigating every one of those cases, or you were told not to continue. What What were you told? Objection. Form of the question. If uh, an officer sees something suspicious, or if we get a call. You know, we'll investigate it. Okay. And so you were told that if an officer sees something suspicious or y'all get a call, you will investigate. Yes. And based on your prior testimony, if you're investigating a person with a gun, you're going to take it away from them, right? Correct. Okay. For the time being, until the investigation's over. Have you received any training or instruction about whether you have to have a reasonable suspicion that they are a felon prior to detaining them to conduct a background check? Objection in the form of the question. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell if anybody's a, a felon unless they're a known felon by someone. You know, I won't know that until a records check. So does that authorize you to stop and detain any person you see with a gun so that you can make that determination? If they're open carrying, Without a fishing pole, yeah. Okay. What are they open carrying with a fishing pole? Uh, it had to be uh, had to see the circumstances. Are they fishing? Or are they walking down Lincoln Road with a fishing pole? You know, two different scenarios. So, if you saw a person on Miami on South Point Pier today with a fishing pole, openly carrying, would you walk up and ask them for ID? I may confront them and be like, "Hey, how you doing? Uh, you know, just to investigate a little." Okay. You wouldn't walk out there with a gun, though, would you? Uh, Point it at him. Excuse me. The question. Excuse me. You wouldn't walk out there and point a gun at him just because they were fishing on the. If pier. they were fishing, in the form of the question. If they were fishing, I had no reason to believe they were a sovereign citizen or anybody else, but just a normal person fishing. Um, yeah, I mean, my suspicion level is a lot lower than it was on that day. Can we agree that pointing a gun at somebody without a legal basis for doing so is called an unarmed assault or an aggravated assault? We could agree that. Okay. Can we agree that? Did he object to I think he did. He did you object, to Rob? I did. Okay. <clears throat> Can we agree that unconsented touching of another person is, without legal justification, is the crime of battery? Yes. Can we agree that detaining somebody against their will without a legal basis for doing so is false imprisonment? Yes. Okay. In this quarterly training, were you told, or were your trainee, or the trainees told, 
that they had done, that there were any errors or mistakes made on June 24th, 2018, and how that situation was handled by the Miami Beach Police Department. The in that in, in, uh, situation or that incident wasn't talked about, probably because it's an open case. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it is, so they're not gonna they're not gonna talk about uh, the things that happened that day. Just a general, you know, if you encounter someone fishing or hunting and they're open carried, they're they're in their legal obligation too. Okay. You were told that 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 is a lawful thing to do. Correct. Objection in the form of the question. You were told during the training that a person openly carrying while hunting, fishing, or camping is acting within the law. Objection in the form of the question. It was reiterated, yes. Okay. Were you instructed that you should still make contact and run their background to see if they're a felon or, or other prohibited person? Objection in the form. That would have to be on the officer's discretion or the type of call that comes into dispatch. Is that what the training people told you? I don't remember the specifics except for those big key points. Okay. Do you know if you got a printed printed material that day for that training? I'm sure uh, the training unit could provide that at the Miami Beach Police Station. Okay. The question was, did you get printed material that day? I don't remember if I did or not. Okay. Have you been told by any supervising officer that you did anything wrong during that incident on June 24, 2018? No. As you look back, do you believe you made any errors that day? No. Did you make any notes regarding any of these conversations you had with these other officers in between the various times you were turning the video off? No. Did you make any written notes that day? No. Have you ever received any training on whether or not you can move a person's property in order to get to the serial number or other identifying information on it to check to see if it's stolen? Checks in the form of the question. Moving as in? For example, have you ever been trained about searching a house and moving a stereo so you can look at the serial number on the back? Mm, I don't. Training like that, no. Okay. In the police academy, did you get any training on dealing with law-abiding citizens who are armed? Who are armed? Yes. <sighs> I'm sure I was, but I can't remember specifics. Okay. You were trained how to deal with people who you needed to take a gun away from in the police academy. I'm sure that was part of the curriculum. Okay. Was that also reinforced by your work with your field training officer? Field training officer, quarterly uh, and annual training when it's involving uh, firearms, Mm -hmm. Uh, any updated uh, legal guidelines maybe pertaining to firearms, they'll put it out there. Have you ever, but have you ever received any training specifically regarding the right of certain people to openly carry or conceal carry firearms in the state of Florida other than the quarterly training you've already told me about? I can't remember. Have you ever received any training regarding citizens' right to bear arms? Yes, because there are citizens can uh, bear arms. Okay. Were you taught how to check concealed carry licenses to see if they were valid? We'll run the, the CCW number, mm-hmm. you know, make sure it's good, valid, okay. through records. <clears throat> when you encounter a person with a concealed carry license, um, how do you search that information to see if it's a valid license? We usually do it through uh, Channel 4, which is our the, the records channel on mm-hmm. the radios. Okay. Um, 
And they check with somebody and let you know, yeah, it's a valid license? They do what they do, and they tell us, yes, it's, it's good or, or it's not valid or whatever. So you, you tell them this is a license number, they come back a few minutes later or however much later and let you know license is valid? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> but even if a person has a valid concealed carry license and all we're dealing with is a speeding ticket, you're still going to completely empty any magazines, right? It depends on the situation. Okay, so it's not a standard policy to empty every, mag every round out of a magazine when you have to take a gun for your safety. I don't believe it is. I mean, I, I don't know. I'd have to review it. Is it your policy to and it, go with the most mundane thing I can think of in the world, mm -hmm. yet I know they can be dangerous? Pull over somebody for speeding. They're very polite, cordial with you, no aggression, no, no talking back. Do you normally ask them if they have any firearms in the car? That's, I usually, and I, I train officers too, and that's usually, uh, that's one of the questions you ask in the initial you know, license registration insurance, are there any weapons in the vehicle? Okay. And if they say, yes, there's a firearm in the vehicle, do you have a standard thing that you do? Usually we'll, you know, just keep your hands where we can see them. We'll request for a, a backup officer if one's not already arrival. We'll ask him, okay, you know, where is it? Is, oh, it's in my glove. It's in my holster. You know, I got it on my side here. No problem. You know, safely come out or safely uh, uh, go through the glove. Once the gun's secured, okay, now we can continue on with the investigation. Right. So your standard procedure, even for a traffic accident where they notify you the gun's there, is you're going to get them out of the car and get, or get that gun away from them? Our priority is, is to make the scene safe, so yes. Okay. Because you believe that taking that gun away from them makes the scene safer? Objects in the form of the question. All right. You said... If I understood your statement correctly, you always take the gun away from the person, no matter what the circumstances, when you're having to investigate something, even a speeding ticket, right? If I know there's a, a weapon, mm -hmm. whether it's a firearm or a knife, uh, yes. Okay. Well, I'm just going to warn you, Florida law separately defines weapon and firearm. So if I say weapon, I mean anything other than a gun. If I say firearm, I only mean firearm. Okay. And that's all I'm worried about today is firearms. Is it your standard policy to remove a firearm from anybody, no matter what the circumstances, when, in, for example, a traffic stop? Objection to form of the question. Go ahead and answer. Yes. Okay. And is it your policy that they're not going to have that gun back loaded until after you have departed the scene? Correct. After we cleared, make sure everything checks out. There's nothing, uh, you know, no felony or, or wanted person or something with a firearm or anything like that, stolen firearm. <clears throat> and if you've been given you have not been given any training at any point to tell you don't do that without having some extra suspicion that there's something going on no okay he said something he said form oh. she's trying to get him down we're doing the best we can <laughs> with the situation Do you hear any of the officers being critical or condescending of any of the armed citizens on the pier that day? No. 
You didn't hear any officers commenting or joking at people who were complaining that their cuffs were too tight? I don't recall that, no. Okay. You don't remember any officers saying, well, you got what it was you wanted being out here? Objection or anything like that? Sure. You don't remember any officers making any comments like, well, I guess you got a reaction. Maybe it wasn't the one you wanted. Objection or form of the question. I don't specifically remember that. You didn't overhear that on any of the body cam footage? If I review the body cam footage and I hear it, then, then it was said. But I, at this moment, I don't recall. So unless it's on the body cam footage, you don't remember it? I'm not going to remember something from three years ago. You didn't make any written notes about the incident for yourself, did you? I did not. So do you have any memory of anything else specifically that was said during the times your body, that you said during the times your body cam was off? The, spe the, form of the, question. the specifics, no. Okay. Do you remember the specifics of anybody else said to you while your body cam was off? No. So we need to rely on your body cam <clears throat> and nothing else in terms of recollection because you have no independent memory, right? As Section far as form of the question. As far as exact verbiage, yes. Okay. Do you remember the general content of any of the discussions while your body cam was turned off? Objection repetitious. You can answer it again. Uh, and just the general investigations uh, is probably what was discussed while the camera was off. Do you remember specifically which other officers you talked to while your camera was off? You know, we already discussed you talked to Lieutenant Garcia. Do you remember anybody else specifically? On uh, one of the BWCs, uh, you see me talking to uh, Sergeant Salaberia. That is, uh, I think, Jennifer Salaberia? Jessica. Jessica, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so you see me talking to her with the audio off, and then you see me activating. So it captures the 30 seconds prior uh, to me, you know, finishing my conversation with her and then activating it and then going back to the to the group. Okay. Just curious question. Why not just leave it on while you're having this discussion with her? Uh, in the form of the question. You just answer, so answer it. Go ahead. Just so uh, investigation uh, talks about the investigation, police tactics, things like that aren't aren't captured on BWC. Okay. Well, you already told me police tactics weren't discussed that day. Well, I'm just giving an example. Okay. That day, why not just let it record? Because things have to be discussed. But it wasn't police tactics you were discussing. What about the investigation was so sensitive that you couldn't leave it running? Objection, a form of the question. It's just common practice. The, the point, the, the, the reason for the BWCs is for the interaction with the public, not so much the interaction with other officers. Have you been warned that officers have gotten in trouble for things that they've said on their body-worn cameras when they didn't remember they were running? Objection of form of the question, argumentative. Ask me who's been informed. Have you? I've seen news stories, yes. Okay. Did you specifically see a sign that day that prohibited firearms on the pier? I did, yes. Okay. Did you take a picture of it? I don't remember if I did. Okay. Did you in order or instruct any other officer to take a picture of that sign? I don't remember. Do you remember if it was a sign that appeared to have been put up by the city of Miami Beach? Yes. That's who it appeared to be put up by was the city of Miami Beach? It's a city pier, so I'm assuming it was a city sign. Okay. Did that sign say no firearms on it? The sign had uh, multiple rules, mm -hmm. one of them being uh, no firearms. Okay. At the point where you walked onto that pier, did you believe that that sign carried some legal weight? I don't think I even looked at the sign. That wasn't my priority at the moment. When you walked out there? You mean, you're saying you didn't look at the sign when you first went out on the pier? Mm, that was the least of my worries at that moment. Okay. Did you look at the sign later that day? Yes. 
were you actually, did you actually discuss that sign's existence with any other officer that day? I may have. Okay. And did knowing that that sign was out there lead you at some point to believe that they weren't allowed to have guns on the pier, period, because of that sign? It brought up questions. Okay. How did you resolve that question? Uh, I didn't resolve anything. It was just the question that was brought up is, is this sign, what is this sign? Is this, does this sign hold any weight? Does the city have any superseding authority? Okay. You know, that, those are just questions that were asked, but. Okay. Did you get any answers to any of those questions that day? Uh, that day, I believe not. I think as time went on, uh, and obviously when the training uh, came in, then it's, it was realized that, okay, this sign, the sign can't, the city can't supersede the, the state or the government, you know, okay. the federal government. Do you understand, you understand as you say here today, that it doesn't matter what that sign says, people are allowed to have firearms on the pier, right? Objection form of the question. <laughs> today, yes. Okay. But during that day, while the incident was still going on, it was a question in your mind as to whether or not people could have guns on the pier because there was a sign there, right? Objection the form of the question. There, it, it did bring up that question. Okay. And you weren't able to resolve it that day? I didn't have an answer. Okay. Do you know if Lieutenant Garcia get, gave you an answer that day on that issue? Um, don't remember. Do you know if anybody else gave you an answer that day on that issue? That day, no. I cannot recall. Okay. You signed off on a few of the officers' narratives that they wrote. Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. Is that kind of standard operating procedure of their your officers? You're going to sign off on their narratives after they're done. Correct. If they're my officers, uh, I review the reports and make sure there's no uh, spelling errors, and you know if everything uh, is as accurate as it could be, then then yes, I approve it. And. Do you know if you interviewed anybody other than the three initial responding officers reports that day? I would have to double check. I'm, I'm sure I appro approved more reports than just theirs. Okay. Um, but my names are on them. If, so if my name's there, then I approved it. Okay. If your name's on it and you approved it, that means you felt like they were sufficiently detailed with their description of the event? Objection to the form of the question. Correct. You ever tell them, sorry, this isn't detailed enough, go back and do it again? Just in general, in, in your job? Uh, there, there may be times, yeah. Okay. Do you remember if you did that with any of the reports that were about this incident? I don't believe I rejected. Um, I think there's a way to find out through uh, the records department or something, but I don't, I don't, know, I don't recall rejecting reports. Okay. Do you remember Lieutenant Garcia making any comments to anybody that we really need to get this right when we write these reports? Objection the form of the question. Uh, I'm sure it was mentioned to, uh, you know, make sure you guys document this as accurately, you know, what happened, what happened. Uh, make sure it's documented, you know. Why do you, why would he have said that in this case? Does he say that in every case? Um, form of the question. That may have been something I may have said, you know. Okay. Why would you, if, if you said it, why would you have said something like that about this case? Uh, realizing uh, where this case was going to end up, you know, we have, you, you know, the Florida Carry people brought their own reporters there, so I'm already seeing, okay, this is something that's, this is something that's going to continue to, to, I guess, we're going to have to deal with this for a while, so let's, we want to make sure everything's on point. You said that the Florida Carry people brought their own reporters to the scene. Yeah, cameramen. Okay. Who told you, or what information do you have to support that statement that they brought cameras or reporters to the scene? Uh, they were filming us. Who was filming you? Uh, one of the cameramen. Okay. Did that cameraman have press credentials? Uh, I don't recall. And they were asking, you know, the public, it's like, which is also on BWC, uh, informing them of the, of the rules reference open carry and fishing. Did somebody tell you that Florida Carry arranged to have those reporters there? No. Did somebody tell you that Florida Carry arranged to have any cameramen there other than the cameras that were on Mr. Taylor or Mr. Jenkins? No. Okay. So just an assumption you made? Yes. 
you don't have any specific information, knowledge, or evidence that Florida Carey arranged for reporters to be there? I don't have any of that evidence, no. Okay. Do you remember any officer laughing about which of Mr. Taylor's shoulders were messed up? Objection to form of the question. No. I asked you earlier about photographing. You don't remember specifically Miss uh, Officer Basel Baselis, is that how her name is pronounced? Baselis. She's, Baselis. Uh, she's Lozano now. Okay. Uh, you didn't see her specifically photographing any serial numbers or anything? I did not. Have you ever taken any classes or continuing education or training offered by the Force Science Institute? No. Do you remember the park ranger's name? No. Did you ever meet or talk with him after that day about this incident? I don't think so. for the questions. Do you remember any of the participants that day on the pier mentioning that they had sent notification to the city before the date of their demonstration? Yes. Object form. And do you remember who said that? <clears throat> I'm, I'd have to review the camera. I'm going to assume Taylor. Did you ever receive any notification that Florida Carey was going to held an, uh, hold an event the day of this incident? Dr. Form? I did not. Did any of the officers, to your knowledge, advise you that they had received notification that Florida Carey was going to hold an event the date of this incident? Dr. Form? They were not, they didn't advise me, no. When the park was closed, the pier was closed. Were any officers remaining in the park? Yes. And how many? Uh, Lieutenant Garcia advised me to have uh, just two officers just hang out in the park area. What was the reason for that? Um, one of the gentlemen advised that he was going to continue fishing. Um, once again, anticipating we're probably going to get calls, it was just easier to just have officers there, um, in, you know, just in case of, of whatever, in case. Uh
Uh, someone calls, you know, a frantic parent maybe. Did you know whether these individuals had committed any offenses? Offenses? Yes. No. Did you know? Did I know? No. Did you know if they planned to commit any offenses? No. Dr. Form. No further questions. You said you left two off. You, oh, sorry. sorry, Mr. Rosenwald, I forget you're on the phone. You have any? <laughs> I'm easily forgettable. Uh, no, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Have a good weekend, everybody. Wait, he's... I got a, I got a quick redirect. Oh, shit. Oh, all right. Hold off on the, on the great weekend. Yeah. So, Sergeant Baldock, yes. you said Lieutenant Garcia told you to leave two officers there. Correct. So the two officers were going to be there anyway, right? Because Jackson. Mr. Weiss was. Check in the form of the question. Two officers were left there because one of the, I guess Mr. Weiss said he was going to stay. Okay. So why not let Mr. Weiss back out on the pier if there's going to be two officers there anyway? Check in the form of the question. That uh, wasn't my decision to make. But doesn't that solve the problem of officers having to come back out for more calls? Objection the form of the question. Whether he was on the pier or fishing from the rocks, it wouldn't have made a difference. Uh, it, it would, people may still call. And so we're going to have two officers there to deal with that, right? Correct. So why not let everybody back out on the pier then? Checks in the form of the question. Once again, that wasn't my call. But doesn't that kind of dispute your earlier possible reason of to avoid future calls. Checks in the form of the question. I didn't make that decision. <laughs> okay. I think we've heard that a few times today. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll Sergeant read. Baldock. Thank you. Okay. Off the video record at 3.50 p.m.